there are two kinds of ambition. There is good and godly ambition. There is also a lot of selfish ambition. So when I use the word ambition in this talk, especially when I contrast ambition and worship, I'm talking about selfish ambition. I'm going to be talking about uh, a man who showed incredibly selfish ambition throughout most of his life. He's a man named Jacob. The life of Jacob is a battle between his love for money, power, romance, and sex on the one hand, and his love for God on the other hand. These are all actually good things. But the moment a pursuit of these things become more fierce, become more intense than a pursuit of God, then we are setting ourselves up for disappointment. Anything we love more than God has become an idol of the heart. First thing I want to share is that idols are always elusive. And I want to talk a little bit about these four idols that we're talking about, money, power, romance, and sex. Jacob's pursuit of money left him deeply disappointed. He deceived his father and he got it all. But what happened? The very next day or soon thereafter, he had to run away, leaving all of that. The second idol of Jacob was the idolatry of power. Jacob's aim of stealing the birthright was not just about money and wealth. It was also about power. But where did that pursuit of power lead Jacob to? He spent many years away, and when he came back eventually to his family, he came groveling before Esau. The third idol that I want to talk about is the idolatry of romance. Jacob was hopelessly in love with Rachel, but there came a time when the romance vanished. Rachel was unable to bear children, and she was hurt. The Bible says Jacob became angry with Rachel. There was no tenderness in him. Where has all the romance gone? The fourth idolatry of Jacob that I want to talk about is the idolatry of sex. Jacob was not just romantically obsessed with Rachel, he was also longing in his sexual desire for her. Jacob, after the wedding festivities, after the wedding night, he woke up in the morning and there was Leah, not Rachel, when our idolatry has run its course, when we have been deceived by the idolatry of the heart in the morning, there is always ugly Leah. The second thing that I want to draw from the passage is simply this. When one idol eludes us, we often begin an equally unfulfilling pursuit of another idol. We see that in the life of Jacob. The Bible says when he actually met Rachel, he wept before her. He's looking for comfort in the idolatry of romance. He's hoping that his disappointments in the idolatry of money and power will be healed by his pursuit of the idolatry of romance. So Jacob is now in a place. The place where he was in is not a happy place. It's not a safe place anymore because Laban is actually becoming jealous of Jacob's success. So he has to run away. And the place he's going to is a place where he could potentially be murdered in the morning when he meets his elder brother Esau. So that night when there is nowhere else to go, no idolatry left to pursue, Jacob finally turns to God. Jacob wrestled with God and he won. Jacob never managed to grasp any of the idols that he pursued in his life, but that by Jacob managed to grasp God. When we chase our idols, we can never get hold of them. But us, in all our sinfulness, we can get our arms around God because he gives himself to us. God feigned weakness and a loved Jacob to overpower him. Our sins don't deserve the death of our Savior, but the love of God, the reckless love of God, made him throw away his son Jesus, made him offer his son as a sacrifice so that we, you and I, can be loved and accepted by God. 